you're excited that you joined us today just to delve into the book of Revelation once more and just see what God is saying to us, um, not just about the future, but today. So today we're going to be in Revelation chapter 17. Of course, we started last week and covered verses 1 through 6, but today we're going to try to finish that chapter covering verses 7 through 18. So again, if you don't have your study guides, it's in Revelation chapter 17, verses 7 through 18. And if, uh, if you've been tracking along with us, as um, I'm certain most of you have, you'll understand that this book of Revelation is a very all-compensative uh, book. It actually uh, lays out a whole lot of areas of concern, mm -hmm. helps us to understand what's going on today, and, and also it, it, uh, it causes us to have a stability and a balance in what we're doing in the Lord Jesus. When you, when you look at this particular area we're dealing with today, uh, you, you're talking about the uh, religious order of things in the world system. And it's very important for us to recognize as believers that there is a religious order or a religious system that operates contrary to the will of God. And uh, many times it will look like uh, the real deal that will actually operate and function sometimes with more discipline and with more uh, more structure than the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. But in all of these things, there's one thing that they don't have, and that is the fullness of the truth of God's will mm -hmm. and God's purpose. Amen. And just like, you know, in terms of building a house, I like to bring it home to where we are today. It's all about the foundation. Where do, is the foundation of these religions that we're going to, false religions? And although the house may go in the natural, if there's a problem in the foundation, there's going to be a problem in the house somewhere down the road. So when we're talking about making sure religions are looking at the different religions versus Christianity, you'll see that the foundation has to be Christ. It has to be um, on the principles that Christianity is built, was built on. And of course, that was a sacrifice of Jesus Christ. So when you're looking in terms of what, how do I determine um, what's real and what's not, always take a look at the foundation. And we have what that foundation should look like in the Word of God. So as, as you begin to examine your own life, uh, firstly remember that uh, the way things are today uh, is headed in a direction that you can't change. Mm -hmm. As a believer, you cannot change what's going on in the world system because the world system has already uh, been designated in a sense as rejecting the Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. wholeheartedly. So don't get caught up in uh, being able to, to bring justification in your life in Christ by barring certain principles of the world system because all the principles of the world system have an underlying foundation of selfishness and an underlying foundation uh, geared toward not believing and not having full confidence mm -hmm. in uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and in the principles of God. Amen. And it brings to mind another point we were talking about as far as denominations. You know, one thing that sometimes we fail to do when we join a denomination or when we give our life to Christ is what does my denomination believe? Sometimes we go in whole hog, as they say, and we don't really examine it. You know, what are the principles that they're founded on? Do they line up with the Word of God? And not saying that we're against denominations, because we're not. Everybody has a part, but we want to make sure that we got whatever we join, that the foundation, the principle, the tenets of faith are still lining up with the Word of God. And that's our job to do that. You know, of course, we can't go in there and say, well, no, you need to take this out and take that out. But it's your job to understand what you're a part of and make sure that you're, you're a part of the body of Christ as a whole, not neglecting to make sure even the earthly organization that you're a part of is still lining up with the Word of God. So, so the ultimate uh, thing that you need to understand uh, is the fact that the reason God goes into such detail concerning the religious order of things after the church has been raptured out of the world is for us to see the fulfillment of many of the things that are happening around us today. Mm -hmm. Today, there is a stronger propensity toward deception and believing deception than ever before. Many times, even when you bring in the truth mm -hmm. to actually counter 
uh, deception, it actually has little or no impact or effect today in the world system. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is because the world system is built upon the foundation of satanic forces mm -hmm. uh, in high places. I, right. I believe Ephesians uh, Ephesians chapter 6, six mm -hmm. makes the statement that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, mm -hmm. but against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness mm -hmm. in high places. So you see, underlying the foundation of the world and, and the way the world feels about God is an underlying foundation of a complete and total rejection of the true, one true and living God. Mm -hmm. and, and you've got to understand there's only one principle that will line up any ministry, any uh, church, any religion in the right manner, and that is that the wholehearted acceptance that Jesus is the Son of the living God, that he died for the sins of the entire world, and that he was resurrected, is alive today, seated at the right hand of the Father, mm -hmm. and we are forgiven through the sacrifices and through all the works of righteousness that he did. Mm -hmm. This is the only way. Now, you can find a lot of uh, justification in the goodness of man and the goodness of people, but there's only one way to the Father. Mm -hmm. That 14th chapter of John's gospel maps it out very plain, very simple. Anytime you add to that, you are taken away from the truth of God. And what does it say in that particular chapter? It says that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh to the Father but through me. That no man mm -hmm. is all in inclusive of everyone that's been uh, born of a woman. Mm -hmm. So recognize that when we look at this, especially this 17th chapter, God reveals to us just how important it is to make certain that you know why yes. you believe what you believe today mm -hmm. and you have the proper foundation. Mm -hmm. Again, denominationalism, there's some that have fought against denominations so strong that they have called themselves non-denominational. Mm -hmm. But but by definition, and this is not by the Bible definition, mm -hmm. but by the definition uh, that we declare all definitions in our dictionaries by, even when you call yourself a non-denomination, mm -hmm. you still are classified by a dictionary as a denomination. Mm -hmm. So you see, don't get caught up in, in the, the titling of it, mm -hmm. but recognize the spirit of denominationalism. The spirit of denominationalism is actually justifying religious or, or Christian division. Mm -hmm. It justifies it saying that one particular denomination or one particular group of believers uh, has all of the truth mm -hmm. and that's the way everyone should live, operate and function. And it is possible for one group of believers right. to have all of the truth. But that group of believers should not be entitled the the uh, the one holy church down the street or, <laughs> or Baptist first and second or, or Presbyterian three and eight. Mm -hmm. It should be believer. Yes. It should be Christian. Mm -hmm. I am a Christian. Yes. I am a believer. Therefore, I believe mm -hmm. in the Lord Jesus Christ as being the only way to the Father. Amen. And and when you look at your look at your uh, your denomination that you are a part of, mm -hmm. go back to the foundation and dig into that foundation and be certain that it's operating according to the principles of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Amen. And you know we have to be careful who we are, who and what we're loyal to. A lot of us, like you were talking about, Apostle, are loyal to our denomination or our organization. But is that organization loyal to God? I think about sometimes you mentioned about the truth. You know, we get the truth, and although we have the truth we still kind of slay it one way or the other depending on how many other people are following if the majority is going this way even though we know the truth we're like well you know i think i'm gonna go with the majority because i don't want to stick out i don't want to cause any trouble and i think about the scripture in matthew 7 in verses 13 and 14 which leads us to believe even in this day in terms of religion we have to be careful and make sure we're loyal to god it says enter ye in the straight gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in their app, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. So you want to be in a position where your loyalty is the Lord. And if you are in that few, 
that you that you know you won't compromise your faith because you're not with the majority. You know, as you look at this particular chapter, especially the seventeenth chapter, uh, look if you will at the seventh verse. It makes this statement, and the angel said unto me, mm-hmm. uh, "Wherefore didst thou marvel?" See, in the uh, in the sixth chapter, the Bible said that John marveled. Mm-hmm. John was amazed. John was stunned. John was at a lack of full understanding as to uh, how uh, such a move as this woman uh, who was uh, presented to him here, uh, Mm -hmm. how they could have such influence and what was his origin and what was it all about. Mm -hmm. So the angel said, uh, wherefore this thy marvel, Uh, I will tell thee the mystery of the woman Mm -hmm. and of the beast that thou carriest. Uh, that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and the ten horns. And on this one verse of scripture hinge a perfect uh, proof of the kind of God we serve. Mm -hmm. God does not want you in ignorance. God does not want you having to wonder what he's about to do. Mm -hmm. Anytime you have to try and guess as to what God's next move is going to be, that is a sign that you are not close enough to understanding the kind of God uh, that you serve. Mm -hmm. Many of us have attributed certain actions and certain movements and certain situations and certain circumstances to God because we do not fully understand God. Mm -hmm. We do not fully comprehend the kind of God we serve, nor do we understand his full character and and the way he is. But God is an open God when it comes to revelation and understanding. Mm -hmm. God wants you to know the truth. But the truth is not bound in the hearts of this world system. It's not bound in the hearts of uh, the the uh, the intellectuals of this day and of this uh, society and of this dispensation, mm-hmm. but it is a lot rooted and grounded in your understanding of the Lord Jesus Christ, his history, his background, mm-hmm. how the nation that birthed him came about being and tying all of this together with his teaching, mm-hmm. with his understanding. This is what God wants us to know. There are no mysteries mm-hmm. that God will not reveal to you if you get close enough to him uh, to receive them. That's right. And Deuteronomy 29 and 29 reminds me always of that precept. It says the secret things belong to the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever that we may do all the words of the law. And I think about what it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. You know, it talks about, you know, I have not seen nor near ear heard, nor entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for them that love him. But then it goes on to say, but they they are revealed to us by his spirit. So God is not, you know, he doesn't want us to be ignorant. He is revealing those things to us, but it's our job to get in such a place where we can receive them. You know, it's one thing to see, it's one thing to hear, but are we really receiving? And when you receive your heart, your spirit is open to what you have seen. It's open to what you have heard. The the and you can see, you can tell when you have received the word or not because your life changes, your actions changes. If you don't receive it, that means you have rejected the word of God. You have rejected truth and your life will follow suit. But we have to get to the point where when God reveals, we receive what God has revealed wholeheartedly as the word of God. So, so as you begin to examine God's word, you can look at this episode here. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it helps us to understand that the reason we have this for us today, mm-hmm. the relevance of the book of Revelation and this 17th chapter is so that we can see the, the end game of where the world system is operating from and what the world's system agenda truly is. Is now mm-hmm. that does not mean that you go around hating uh, the men and women of the world and those who are caught up in the system, but we actually rebuke the old uh, ways of doing things and all the old religion and uh, and the systems of the world. We rebuke them by actually living and operating in their midst in the kingdom of God and in the principles of God and in what God wants us to do. Mm-hmm. And as you begin to examine. Uh, the the fullness of revelation. Uh, I enjoy First uh, Corinthians chapter two, mm-hmm. uh, the 
statement is made, I hath not seen, mm -hmm. neither ear heard, mm -hmm. neither hath entered into the heart of, of man the things that God has prepared for those that love him. Mm -hmm. And if you stop there, then you leave everything a mystery. Mm -hmm. You leave everything uh, in need of understanding. But then it goes on to say in the very next verse, mm -hmm. it says, but they, but they. Remember, any time you see a but, uh, in the middle of a statement, it has the capacity mm -hmm. to change what preceded it or to actually open up or give more understanding That's to what exactly. became before the but. Mm -hmm. So don't stop reading when you get to the but, but go on the other side of the but and it will reveal to you uh, the, the fullness of what was, uh, what was preceding it. So when you read uh, that statement, it says, but... Uh, they, what? Mm -hmm. The things that eyes haven't seen, the mm -hmm. things that ears haven't heard, mm -hmm. the things that haven't entered into the heart of man. They, those things are revealed to who? They're revealed to us. Mm -hmm. How? By the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. uh, for he goes on to say the Spirit of God searches not some things, uh -oh. not a lot of things, but searches all things mm -hmm. and is understanding the deep things of God. So mm -hmm. God wants you to know the deep things. Mm -hmm. I, so many times I've heard a lot of God's people say, that's too deep for me. <laughs> oh, oh no, it's not too deep that's for right. you. Amen. It's, it's, it's too deep for you to roll back your sleeve and dig into it. Mm -hmm. But that's the only thing that's got that's deep about it. Mm -hmm. Listen to me. Sometimes you've got to recognize to get the true treasures of God. You've got to dig deep. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, if you're digging for gold, you may find a little bit of gold on top of the ground mm -hmm. or just a few foot, feet under. But the deeper you go, the greater the deposits yes. of wealth or gold that you're going to find. Mm -hmm. And that's the same way it is with the word of God. Mm -hmm. As you dig deeper into the word, you're going to get more of the treasures of God. As you go deeper into an understanding of God's word, God's will, and God's purpose, you are going to grow and mature. Just remember this, darlings. If someone is trying to build you to a place where you understand God more, do not allow anything to get between you and that level of understanding. Amen. In this world system today, Satan tries to booby trap the truth mm -hmm. by causing a lot of men and women of God mm -hmm. to actually fight against the truth of God because they don't understand it. Mm -hmm. Listen, we have a responsibility mm -hmm. as believers, but especially mm -hmm. as leaders to dig deep. Yes. We have a responsibility if a question is asked about the kingdom of God, mm -hmm. about the will or the purpose of God, mm -hmm. we should be able to give an answer. Mm -hmm. Do not serve in a, in a ministry or in a denomination where you don't understand what it's all about. Mm -hmm. you know, where you don't know what kind of foundation is there. Mm -hmm. And I think about the scripture you're talking about being able to give an answer. It's in 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 15. It says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of hope that, th that is in you with meekness and fear. You need to be able to explain why you believe what you believe. And you mentioned one word that stuck out to me, the mm -hmm. treasure that the word of God is. The, you know, it's a treasure. And if we look at that, if we appreciate it as a treasure, then it's going to exude in our lives. You know, even in the natural, if you have something of value, you let people know. They can see it in your life. But if you just you know, it may be just silver to you. So you're not going to share it. You're not going to be, you know, flashing it, so to speak. But the word of God is a, treasure, is a treasure and you need to be able to explain why do I believe what I believe? Even those things that may be surface to someone else, you need to be able to say, but it says here, break it down for them so they can see the treasure that you see and give an account for why you believe and why you hope the way you hope. And the thing that really, really amazes me is how you can find something plain and simple mm -hmm. and open in the word of God. And then in your trying to, to uh, explain it and trying to share it, you make it complicated. You know, I, I think about a lot of denominations mm -hmm. do not believe in being filled with 
the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Yet there are countless scriptures that speak of it. Some have said it was for that dispensation then because they needed it more back then mm -hmm. than we need it now. They needed it to lay the good foundation for us. Mm -hmm. But now that we've got the good foundation uh, uh, concerning the, the teachings of the Spirit, then now we don't we don't need the Holy Spirit inside of us. That's, darkness, that's stupidness going to seed. You've got to recognize uh, that, that whenever it comes to the Spirit of God, mm -hmm. Jesus Jesus made the statement, he will abide with you forever. forever. Mm -hmm. It didn't say he's going to abide with a building. Mm -hmm. It didn't say he was going to divide with a, uh, with a uh, what we say, a literal kind of church. Right. But he was talking about the spiritual body of Christ, mm -hmm. the spiritual church, men and women, flesh and blood, men and women who are born of God. Mm -hmm. we, we, we represent the ones who are to be or to have the dwelling of the spirit of God mm -hmm. forever. Yet there are denominations who don't believe in the spirit. In, in uh, the Holy Spirit dwelling in believers. Mm -hmm. Or if they believe he dwells in there, they believe that there is actually no manifestation mm -hmm. of the Spirit of God, the, the proof that the Spirit of God is in an individual. Mm -hmm. you know, all of this, darlings, we've got to weed this stuff out. Any little bit of corruption, mm -hmm. any little bit of misunderstanding, any little bit of misrepresentation of the Word of God leads to uh, uh, disempowerment. Mm -hmm. It leads to your not being able to walk in the fullness of the promises of God and the will and the purpose of God. Empowerment today is not because the power isn't getting to the main unit. Mm -hmm. The problem today is the main unit is not properly processing the power. Right. We have empowered. When we're born of God, we are empowered by God. The Spirit of God dwells on the inside of us, but the Spirit of God cannot operate in spiritual ignorance. Can I say that one more time? Mm -hmm. The Spirit of God cannot fully, let me add that to it, fully mm -hmm. operate in spiritual uh, uh, ignorance. Mm -hmm. So the more you know, the more you grow. Mm -hmm. The more you understand the more you're able to stand. Mm -hmm. The more you in understand, the more of God's blessings you are able to reap. The greater your harvest because you are sowing the right kind of seeds. Right. Believers today, many are sowing the wrong kind of seeds. Mm -hmm. They're sowing fleshly seeds, mm -hmm. expecting to receive That's a spiritual true. harvest. Amen. No, darlings, you have to sow spiritual seeds. Well, how do you, how do you take something that's natural mm -hmm. and make it a spiritual seed? Mm -hmm. You do everything by faith. The moment you attach faith to anything you're operating with, it becomes spiritual. That's right. That simply means that if you're sowing a seed, the way you make that seed spiritual is you do it by faith. Amen. If you're doing it by, by constraint or you're doing it by, by, uh, by just you're seeing a need mm -hmm. or you're doing it just because uh, you had the pressure on you, you're not going to get a harvest. Mm -hmm. But when you do it by faith, I believe mm -hmm. that this seed mm -hmm. is going to prosper yes. while I apply it to mm -hmm. and make it better or cause it to do more in the kingdom of God mm -hmm. and it's going to work. Mm -hmm. But how do I understand mm -hmm. all of this? How do I get to the bottom of all of this? Studying a book like the book of Revelation mm -hmm. opens the door for you mm -hmm. to have a better understanding of how God is today and to recognize what you are to avoid as a believer. That, that, um, that eighth verse of this chapter makes it makes this statement. Mm -hmm. It says, The beast that thou sawest. So now there was a scarlet colored beast that the woman was sitting upon. He said, The beast that thou sawest uh, was mm -hmm. and is not and shall uh, ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into uh, perdition. Mm -hmm. Now look at the way he said it. This, this, this beast was mm -hmm. and this beast is not. Mm -hmm. And this beast shall ascend right. out of the bottomless pit. So, so who is this beast? Right. Uh, this beast is false religion. Mm -hmm. This beast is actually Satan himself. Wow. Uh, and it says he uh, he was mm -hmm. and is not. Well, well, what does that mean? There was a time mm -hmm. when he ruled and reigned through everything on the face of the planet. Right. He had uh, Adam and Eve sold out to him. And so he was the God of this world. Mm -hmm. But then uh, when you move to the part say and is not, this is the day when he is not. What do you mean is not? 
He has no power to operate in this world today over the power of God. Mm -hmm. So that simply means that although we are in the world, mm -hmm. we are not of the world. Mm -hmm. That also means that although we're in warfare, mm -hmm. although we have different things going on around us, we need to understand that Satan can't stop us. No. Satan cannot move us out of the path of God. We can, but mm -hmm. Satan can't. That's right. And it's one scripture that comes to mind. You're talking about religion and, you know, even Satan, which was, and, you know, he... he this, talking about what's in here and what's to come. I look at Isaiah 41 and 10. It's mm -hmm. one of the scriptures that used to, every time, time I was against um, something that I thought I was struggling, I would go to this scripture, but it said, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. So in this scripture, it's talking about he's going to help us. He's going to strengthen us. So then he does this from the inside out, not from the outside in. But like we said, the warfare, it's a spiritual warfare. This spiritual warfare, it goes on in our mind and our spirits. But we have to remember God is there to help us. We do not have to fight this alone. We do not have to keep continue, um, determining, you know, how am I going to get it right? God is, is there to help you. You know, I think about now, Apostle jokes with us all the time. If I don't know something, I'll just go to Google or I'll go to Siri. Well, the Holy Ghost is my spiritual Siri. It's my spiritual Google because I'm like, God, I need to know what to do. God, I need help. God, I need some direction. We have to remember that we have an inside helper. God is our, our helper, the Holy Spirit. He is the one that leads and guides us and will help us. Sometimes we forget that we think we have to do everything, even understanding, even wisdom, in our own strength. But remember, you have an inside helper, and that helper is the Holy Spirit. He is not only going to help you, but he's also going to strengthen you. And, and think about this. Uh, sometimes we forget that even with Siri and even with Google, mm -hmm. they have a database. They're That's operating true. from somewhere. They are getting their information from somewhere. So the information mm -hmm. has been put in to the system, and then Google and uh, Siri and all these other different uh, AIs, they actually tap into it, uh, the information, and share it with us. Mm -hmm. Well, with us, our database is the Bible. Wow. The word of God. Mm -hmm. So you see, how can you ask the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. a question mm -hmm. when you don't have the proper access to the database? Mm -hmm. Well, what gives you access to the database? Your relationship with God. Being born again gives you access to the database. Mm -hmm. But in that database, if you're going to know how to find what needs to be found, you're going to have to study mm -hmm. to show yourself approved under God as a workman that needs not not to be ashamed. Mm -hmm. When you look at this scarlet beast mm -hmm. that this woman or this th that religion rides on, it's none other than the devil. And when you, you look at he at him being was mm -hmm. and is not, and then shall ascend out of the bottomless pit in the last days, during the tribulation period, mm -hmm. the Antichrist, this is none mm -hmm. other yeah. than the devil being manifested in the flesh. Mm -hmm. He is going to come uh, out of the bottomless pit uh, at the end of time during the tribulation period and wreak havoc on the earth. And somebody said, well, why? He? Well, he's already doing that. Listen, darlings, you haven't seen anything yet. As a matter of fact, he can't do what he would like to do with us being here. How mm -hmm. do you know? Because of 2 Thessalonians. Mm -hmm. 2 Thessalonians, I believe it's the second chapter, makes the statement uh, that, that, uh, that God is, is, is keeping us, that God is strengthening us, mm -hmm. that God is building us up. And it says, only he that, that now let it will let mm -hmm. until he be taken out of the way. That is such an important part wow. of scripture. Can you find it for us? Yes. That is so uh, important. We need to really look at it because you need to understand why the, the beast is not today. Why he's not operating in the world system uh, 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 over God's people today. Oh, he's in the world system, mm -hmm. but he doesn't have authority over us because we are here. Until the Holy Spirit releases uh, the the uh, the world in such a manner as that he pours out uh, those that are, are, are his, the, the, the beast cannot manifest himself. The Antichrist mm -hmm. cannot show himself. The son of perdition cannot. Well, give us that That's verse. right. It's 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7. It says, For the mystery of iniquity doeth already work. Okay, stop, stop, hold off right there. Okay. The, the mystery mm -hmm. of iniquity. Mm -hmm. You see, this is the key to your being empowered properly with God. Mm -hmm. You need to understand the mystery 
of iniquity. Mm -hmm. No, now it, it can't work. The fullness of it can't work now. Mm -hmm. But you need to understand the mystery of it. Mm -hmm. uh, what what is the mystery of iniquity? Where it came from? Mm -hmm. Of what it's all about? And what it's trying to do now. There is a difference uh, in sin and in iniquity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, when I say a difference, meaning they have a, a core meaning that gets uh, to a point where you, you understand that, that we are all born sinners. Mm -hmm. We all actually operate in the sinners. And we're, we're literally, we're born in iniquity. Mm -hmm. uh, but whenever you give your life to Christ, then you are no longer uh, born in iniquity, but you're born in the right righteousness of Christ, although sin is still prevalent. Mm -hmm. Sin still operates. So you may be asking yourself, what is the difference in sin mm -hmm. uh, and, and iniquity? Mm -hmm. Well, when you begin to examine that particular, uh, those particular statements, just remember, sin is an action mm -hmm. and iniquity is a, a state of being, mm -hmm. uh, which simply means keep on sinning. And what happens is you actually build up a point in place wherein you operate uh, from that, uh, that foundation of iniquity. Mm -hmm. it, it's just like killing someone you know there's they've got uh, first degree murder they've got second degree murder they got premeditated murder mm -hmm. well well when you look at if what's the difference in sin and iniquity well I iniquity is like premeditated mm -hmm. in other words you're not doing this out of uh, 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 misunderstanding or mm -hmm. you're not doing this uh, out of uh, just error or a mistake but you plan on doing it that's right and I think about the scripture that talks about how iniquity has to be worked you know, Jesus gives the parable about there's there's many that's calling on him now. This you know he's going to reject. He talks about how you know he depart from me, you that worketh iniquity, for I know, never knew you. So that means iniquity has has to be worked. It's something we have to do, like you said. It's premeditated. I thought about it. I worked it. That's the difference between sin and iniquity. And uh, now I'm going to make a statement here that. Uh, for some of you, you're going to have to wrestle with, mm -hmm. but you don't wrestle with me, wrestle with God, because it is in the Word of God. Right. Uh, remember this, God tempts mm -hmm. no man. That's right. Just just let that settle in so that that means that every temptation that mm -hmm. comes your way, regardless of where it comes from, regardless of how it shows up, it no temptation comes from God. Mm -hmm. God does not tempt Man, now you may go into your scripture and you may try to find several places where God was was trying to tempt man to to do this or that or that. But listen, according to mm -hmm. God's word, according to this day of grace, mm -hmm. according to the dispensation of grace, God tempts no mm -hmm. man. Amen. And there's another thing that you need to understand, and 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 I, I think this will clear your head up. Mm -hmm. Listen very closely to what I'm about to say. No temptation mm -hmm. operates from the outside in. Mm -hmm. All temptation operates from the inside out. That's right. Uh, now, 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 what do you mean by that? Uh, no man is tempted uh, when he is drawn into temptation, mm -hmm. but temptation comes in whenever a man is drawn away uh, of his own lust. Mm -hmm. So listen, if you ever get into temptation mm -hmm. and if you're ever tempted by something, it's something that will cause your flesh yes. to want to gravitate toward it. Mm -hmm. You've either thought about it, mm -hmm. you felt it, or something's going on in your flesh mm -hmm. to cause you to open the door to that temptation. So it's not the temptation's mm -hmm. fault. That's right. And meaning it's not even the one who's tempting you fault. Mm -hmm. And this is going to sound really crazy to you, but mm -hmm. the devil, when he tries to tempt us, he's just doing what he does. But any temptation he brings is a temptation that actually really is, he's already recognized, is already, uh, there's a door open in your spirit for that temptation to work. That's so right. whenever you try to blame somebody for your doing wrong, mm -hmm. listen to me, stop trying to play the blame game. Mm -hmm. If you do something wrong, you are 100% yeah. responsible for doing wrong. Mm -hmm. And I know that sounds hard, but it, until you get to that place, you're never going to line your life up right with God. As long as you can blame somebody mm -hmm. else for causing you to do wrong, then you're never going to get it scraped. S-K-R-A-T-E. But to get it scraped, mm -hmm. go ahead and accept the fact that, that I will assume 100% percent responsibility for my wrongdoing. Mm -hmm. Yes, 
the 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 trap was set. Mm -hmm. Yes, the temptation was was laid out, but unless there had been something inside mm -hmm. of my flesh, yes. something that appealed to a part of me that I had not brought under the blood yet, mm -hmm. it would have never worked. Now, just because you're tempted mm -hmm. uh, does not mean that you have already sinned. Yeah. No, but then whenever you're tempted mm -hmm. and you 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 recognize what's going on and you keep working it and building on it mm -hmm. and thinking about it. The Bible says you have that. I do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let, let's see what the word says. It's in James 1 verses 14 through 15. It says, but every man is tempted. Of course, it says I, God cannot be tempted, neither tempted any he man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin and sin when it is finished, bringeth forth death. So, so you see, when you begin to look at it from that perspective, a lot of God's people are all confused about how they did wrong. Mm -hmm. And they feel like, you know, they, they, they build up hatred and malice toward the ones that, that were involved in their wrongdoing or mm -hmm. whatever, not even realizing as long as you can blame somebody else, right. as long as you can say somebody else made you do it, then you are not assuming far, full responsibility and you cannot uh, accept the uh, the accountability of what you did. Mm -hmm. I don't care who you are. I don't care what level you are in God. I don't care what kind of anointing you got. You may be able to walk on water. You may be able to uh, walk on clouds. You may be able to, to reach out and touch uh, uh, men and women and cancers melt away and all kind of, you may be able to do all these things, but you are not beyond mm -hmm. reproach when it comes to being tempted right. and recognize that whenever you are tempted, it is not the tempter's fault uh, for doing what they do, but it is your fault for falling for what that temptation is, and it's built upon something that's already in you. That's a hard pill to swallow, but if you can take that dose, mm -hmm. that it's like castor oil. Now it'll give you a good workout, <laughs> but if but if you can take it, then it will it will solve your situation or your circumstance that you're in. Stop looking for someone to blame. Go back in your past, because yes. some of you are trapped in your past. Mm -hmm. You 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 you're saying, well, if so and so hadn't done so and so, mm -hmm. then I wouldn't have done this or that. That or the other. As long as you're at that place, you are not in a place where God can heal you. That's but right. when you get to the place where you accept full responsibility, mm -hmm. it, it's it's you. That's right. You are the one that did it. You are the one that was involved in it. Don't worry about the other individual or the others that are involved. They will get their just reward. Mm -hmm. But you need to answer for you. Mm -hmm. Let a man answer for himself. Yes. Let a man work out his own salvation with fear and trembling. It's not about them mm -hmm. and them being wicked mm -hmm. and them being evil mm -hmm. and them throwing stumbling blocks in front of them in front of you. It's not about them. It's yes. about you. Amen. Will you accept the fact that you stumbled, mm -hmm. that you failed, that you missed the mark, and it was nobody's fault? The number one person mm -hmm. to blame for your failure is you. Amen. Either you were not walking in the in the strength of the spiritual knowledge you should have been walking mm -hmm. in, or you cater too much to the flesh. And when you do that, you allowed your flesh to take over, self to take over. And when it, it conceived or fulfilled itself, it brought about the sin. Amen. And I was talking to someone last night, telling them the greatest thing that I ever did as a believer, except my position and my fault, except every, the responsibility for my actions. And that's what we do when we say, God, it's, it's not me. I'm not talking about what everybody else is doing, but what did I do? And I was thinking about as far as we talk, the Bible talks about how we're drawn away. If you picture, if you will, a magnet, the only way a magnet can draw to itself is it has to have another field of magnet, another magnet drawing it. So the closer it gets to that field, the more it's going to be drawn. And the Lord gave me a visual of how in my life, if there is still something that is that the magnet can draw, so to speak, whatever my temptation is, it's going to draw. So we have to get to the point where everything in my life is purified by the word of God. If there's no an, another magnetic field, the magnet can't draw anything. It's just, it's powerless. So until I make sure my life is lined up, until I get rid of all those things that can draw that magnet, so to speak, it's always going to be a current there that can draw something. But realize whether it's good, whether it's bad, whether it's ugly, accept your responsibility in the matter. 
in the sin. Yes, you were drawn away. We can't blame anyone else. There was something in my life that drew me to that. So the faster we accept that, the faster we can get rid of the victim mentality. You know, they just keep doing it to me. And I remember thinking in my process of maturity, I used to say, God, it feels like I have a big red dot on my chest <laughs> that, you know, everybody is playing target practice with. Why everybody picking on me? And he gave me a vision and took me back over all my life. I think in the vision, I was maybe like five years old and began to share uh, visions of those things that were those seeds that were planted in my life and how they matured through who I, you know, who I was around and what I experienced. And when I understood that, I understood, okay, I need to go way back. You know, this magnet in me, I need to go way back. I don't need to start just with this year. So we, sometimes we have to do the same thing and realize it's still something in me. It's not the temptation, because there can be no temptation if there's nothing to draw. So remember, start with you. And, and I know it's hard because sometimes if we feel like, you know, we have to be perfect. But we can only be perfect if we start with us and realize, does my life line up with the word? And if not, I'm going to continue to find myself in these situations in a different state, in a different environment, and different people. But until the problem is resolved, that's where we're going to be. And, and you, you begin to wonder again, uh, how can you tie this into the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. It opens the door of understanding. Mm -hmm. It gives us an uh, access to see the end game. Right. You may be trying to determine how can the world get as messed up as it is today? How can men and women operate and function with the kind of uh, evil agendas that, that, that are happening today? The, the groundwork is being set for the Antichrist. But just remember, mm -hmm. that beast... Uh, is not uh, uh, operating today at its full capacity mm -hmm. uh, because God's people, we, you, mm -hmm. and I, the church, we're in the in the uh, we're, we're in the world today. Mm -hmm. And that scripture in, in that second chapter of uh, Second Thessalonians says, mm -hmm. "Only now he who led it yes. will let until he be taken out of the way." And that he mm -hmm. that is speaking about there is none other than the Spirit of God, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit. Uh, now then it says, once he is taken taken out of the way, then the, the, uh, the, 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 that wicked one, the, the uh, son of perdition will be revealed. So mm -hmm. you see, that's what this means here when it says the beast uh, was mm -hmm. and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. So you mm -hmm. see, uh, the time when he is going to manifest himself, the Antichrist, mm -hmm. the one who is uh, everything that Christ is, he is not. Yet he mimics to be the true Christ when in reality he is the Antichrist. He, he will propagate the gospel. He will propagate how important it is to be a part of the kingdom of God, but he will be propagating it from a foundation of evil, from a foundation of uh, causing uh, mankind to worship him. Mm -hmm. In other words, he is going to actually present himself as being God who's come down to this earth and is now ruling this earth. That's why a lot of these doctrines that talk about how uh, uh, there's not going to be a tribulation period and mm -hmm. how there's going to come a time whenever uh, the, the those that are in a certain mode of religion are going to be able to rule over the whole world. Be careful mm -hmm. with those kind of teachings because uh, many times that opens the door uh, uh, for you to be be deceived in the thinking that just because you have a certain capacity to obtain wealth and just because you have a certain area uh, to uh, of popularity in religion mm -hmm. uh, that you are on to something and it's not going to it eliminates uh, uh, some of the word of God. Mm -hmm. Listen, I don't care if you get so rich that you are you're the number one richest person in the world. You will not be able to stop the tribulation mm -hmm. period from from coming. And some of you say, well. Why would God empower us to, to be able to stand above the enemy and beyond the enemy and on the enemy right. and, and then have to turn around and, and uh, release things back into the hands of the enemy? Because this is not about us changing the world. Mm -hmm. This is about God changing you. Mm -hmm. God is not wanting to grab this whole world up in his bosom the way it is and take it into heaven because it won't work. God is wanting to, uh, to bring about a peace people, a chosen nation, a royal priesthood, mm -hmm. a, a holy nation.
nation, uh, a people who have been conformed to the image of Christ and beholding that image, uh, mm -hmm. becoming the same as that image. God is looking at men and women who have been empowered through the things they have gone through mm -hmm. by taking authority over all the devices of the enemy mm -hmm. so that we can be taken out of this world. That's God right. is not wanting to make you wealthy to stay here. Mm -hmm. God's wanting to make you wealthy to show that he is the still the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and to prove to the world that even in this world system, mm -hmm. you prosper more in the kingdom of God mm -hmm. than you do in the kingdom of the world. That's right, and that's a truth that you have to believe. You know, we have to get to the point where we believe the truth, because if not, we can be deceived. If we, can't, if we let all this worldly understanding and worldly wisdom enter into our spirit, then we'll be confused. And God, we know that God is not the author of confusion. I also wanted to read the rest of that verse you were mm -hmm. talking about okay. in Second Thessalonians, just to give us a clearer picture. It says, um, for the mystery of iniquity doeth already work. Only he who now letteth until he be taken away. And then it says, then the wicked will be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all the power and signs and lying wonders. And then, of course, it goes on in verse 11 and says, And for this cause shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. So we have to we have to believe the truth because if not, we can let all these things, the, you know, when I think about this, the wheat growing with the tear, you can get tied up in so many things when you open the door for deceitfulness. And the way you do that is in not believing the full truth, saying, well, you know, I worry about all that revelation stuff, you know, when the time comes, if I'm still here. You need to realize you have to know the truth for yourself, not what somebody told you, so to speak, but be like the Bereans. Go into the word and find out for yourself because there's going to come a time when you're going to have to give an answer. God, this is why I believe. I believe you and nobody should be able to shake you from your foundation of truth in the word of God because of your relationship with him. So so when you when you take these scriptures in uh in uh, Second Thessalonians, mm -hmm. the scripture in Corinthians, mm -hmm. the scriptures in uh, the Old Testament. Uh, when you take all of these scriptures and, and pour them out, right. and then you read this eighth verse here in Revelation, it all opens up and you have a full understanding of what's going on. Mm -hmm. That's called rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, now the question I would like to ask mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. is why would... A man mm -hmm. and a woman share these kind of things with you mm -hmm. uh, if they are trying to destroy you or keep you from doing what God wants you to do. Mm -hmm. You see, this is the this is the thing that is so crazy. Uh, this world will believe a lie quicker than it will the truth. That's but true. I am finding out now, you know, in 43 years of ministry, I'm finding out also that the church uh, yes. has a propensity uh, amongst many of them to believe a lie before they believe the truth. Mm -hmm. And if you ever get to a point where you begin to tell the truth and operate in the truth and share the truth, they will say, what qualifies you? Mm -hmm. Do you have a spotless life? Mm -hmm. Have you have you got a life where you have lived without having uh, gone through any of these failures? And if you don't, mm -hmm. then they say you are not qualified. Right. Not understanding that the very foundation of Christianity mm -hmm. is a foundation that leads one to take uh, victory, to be an overcomer. Right. How can you be an overcomer mm -hmm. if you've never been in anything? Mm -hmm. and, and and another thing to ask yourself is, is how can you say mm -hmm. that someone who has been knocked down to the bottom mm -hmm. and crawls and pulls and picks themselves up in God, back on their feet, God raises them back. How can you say that they have no authority to tell you the truth? Mm -hmm. The truth, darling, is not uh, dependent upon someone propagating it who is perfect. Mm -hmm. It's dependent upon someone propagating it who has bought into it and who firmly believes through a proven life that the truth works. Listen carefully to me. Mm -hmm. When you begin to look at this book of Revelation, examine your life. The Bible says, let a man uh, examine himself to see if he's in the faith or not. Mm -hmm. Some of us, we have not given ourselves that thorough kind of examination. Mm -hmm. Search out what you believe. 
Find out why you believe what you believe. Some say, I don't believe in women preachers. Find out why it is you don't believe in and, and confirm it by the word of God, not just a bit, a piece of the word, but all the word. Some say, I don't believe in this Holy Spirit or I don't believe in uh, these uh, unknown tongues and all this stuff. Listen, have you searched it out? Well, I don't have to search it out. I can, I can know in my spirit. How can you know in your spirit outside of the word of God? Mm -hmm. They both agree. Are you afraid to go into the Bible to confirm what you think has been revealed to you by the Holy Spirit? Because mm -hmm. listen, if you rightly divide the word of God, it will not take away from what the spirit has told you, but it will clarify what the Spirit has told you. Mm -hmm. Some today, they believe that one it's one church, there's only one true church, mm -hmm. and that one true church in the last days, everybody's going to become a part of that one true church. Well, listen, that one true church is already existing. That's right. That one true church is men and women of God who have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ irregardless Regardless of where they go to church, right. regardless of what denomination they're in, whether it be Baptist, Catholic, Methodist, Presbyterian, we are not talking about religion here. Mm -hmm. Listen to me. You may want to be sprinkled. You may want to be <laughs> dipped. You That's may right. want to be salt and peppered and rolled over like you in an oven mm -hmm. to, to fulfill whatever you think it takes mm -hmm. to uh, be justified before God. That's you. That's right. But you cannot make everybody conform to that. But if you want to conform to the truth of God, mm -hmm. then you find what God has in his word mm -hmm. that says that you can not change this. Amen. It's appointed unto man wants to die, mm -hmm. and after that the judgment. Mm -hmm. God says let every man work out his own uh, salvation. Yes. That's the word. Yes. So right. these are the principles. When you look at this beast mm -hmm. in this bottom of the pit, you got to understand that. That's right, and you have to re realize when you start growing, you start maturing and getting to the word of God, or getting delivered, everybody's not going to celebrate your, your deliverance. <laughs> I was just reading the other day, and it, and it just... Uh, shot, I wouldn't say shot, but I was marveled at the spirit of people. But it was talking about the episode with the man that had legion, the many mm -hmm. demons inside of him, and how people saw how he were before he had the encounter with Jesus. Now, you would think that after he was delivered, that they would be celebrating and want Jesus to stay around. But these people began, they saw the change. They were like, no, you need to get out of here. And I'm thinking to myself... This is the spirit of people. Instead of inviting him to stay, that more will be healed, more will be delivered. They wanted him to go. No, you need to go. We don't want you here because they didn't understand it. They didn't want that around them. So remember, you may be delivered. You may grow. People will see where you used to be and see where you are now. And be like, you know, and still say, you know what? No, nah, we don't want that over here. I don't want that. I don't want that change. But don't let that take away from who you are. Matter of fact, this man, he wanted to follow Jesus and be Amen. one of his disciples. And God said, no, you stay here. You tell others what I have done for you. So if that's what you have to do, you stay around those people that, you know, may not want to believe or have saw you where you were and see where you were now. And give the testimony of what God has done for you. And sometimes you don't have to see a word, say a word. You will be like this man that they saw cutting himself before. And now he is dressed. He's sane. He didn't have to say a word. They knew something had happened. That he had been with Jesus. Can people around us say that they have been with Jesus? They're, they're not the same person they used to be. They have truly been with Jesus. So remember, in your growth, in your standing for what the word of God says, in your standing for truth, you may not be celebrated. They may not say, well, thank God for this to so-and-so. She has really grown. She is a giant in the Lord. They may not do that. But don't look for that. Just know that you are a testament for God because people can look on your life and say she or he has been with Jesus. So, so what started the revival mm -hmm. in that city where that, uh, where that uh, uh, lead, the mm -hmm. man that was four, had a thousand demons yeah. in him, what started the revival? Right. You know, again, they rejected Christ. They, did. they wanted him to leave, to get away. So what brought them to revival? Mm -hmm. Was it somebody who had a perfect life? Mm -hmm. Was it somebody who uh, who uh, who was uh, teaching or, or preaching the, the gospel uh, from a pure uh, foundation? Mm -hmm. No, darlings. This man, the one who had the 1,000 demons. demons in him, right. he wanted, as you stated there, he wanted to, to go with Jesus. He was set free. He wanted to just be around who had yeah. set him free. The Lord said, no, I need you to go back mm -hmm. and tell them, and show them and manifest to them what, what I've what I've brought to your life. This man went back 
and and he he lived in the he lived around the people who had rejected him. Mm -hmm. He lived around the people who had no previous confidence in him. He operated throughout that city and he lived in such a manner mm -hmm. and he walked in such a truth of God uh, that when Jesus returned to that city, mm -hmm. the entire city was wow. there to welcome him back in. Wow. Darlings, you've got to understand God brings the rest of the world to a level of understanding mm -hmm. through how you operate in the kingdom of God mm -hmm. and how you grow and mature in the kingdom of God. You are not trying to, as I've stated so many times before, you are not trying to meet the standard of man mm -hmm. or you are not trying to meet a denominational standard that was established by man interpreting parts and bits and pieces of the Bible without rightly dividing it. But you are geared together. You are created. You function from a foundation of operating in the full mm -hmm. truth of God mm -hmm. as you have dug into it and learned it for yourself. Amen. And in this dispensation, you know, I hear it a lot. They'll, they'll label someone, oh, they're religious. But let when they see you, they may say you're religious, but let you be after the one true religion. And we know that's after Christ, Christianity. So we have to remember, we're not here to fight against denomination or what you believe. But remember, in Revelation, it's talking about this religious, this beast on this, this um, um, animal is religion. And we have to remember and always know in whom we have believed and why we have believed. And remember, fight and live after the right religion, which is in Christ <laughs> Jesus. You, you know, as, as we go into into this book and, mm -hmm. and especially into this this chapter here, you know, we have spent an entire uh, hour right. on just two, two verses. verses of scripture. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we were tying it back in mm -hmm. to the rest of the Bible and helping you to get a good understanding mm -hmm. as to what God was sharing and relating here in comparing spiritual things mm -hmm. with spiritual things. And you know, that's why I shared with you last week, it is it is not possible with this platform only right. to go into the kind of in-depth study that we would like to take you in. But we've given you a sampling of how you go into God's word mm -hmm. and how you dig into it and how you find and milk the word of God mm -hmm. uh, for all the truth of God. This is necessary mm -hmm. in these last days. The entire body of Christ can't do this uh, collectively in the time frame that they operate and function in. But five-fold ministry offices, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, mm -hmm. we can do this. Right. We can dig into the world. Word. We can share among ourselves the wisdom and the fullness of God and then present it wow. in its fullness to the entire body of Christ. Mm -hmm. You see, in these last days, those of us that walk in these uh, office anointings mm -hmm. in God, it is our responsibility to go into the word of God and rightly divide the word and feed it to the people of God. So in this day, in this season, mm -hmm. in this time, you cannot just take one or two scriptures and quickly move over them and, and you know we only have a, a, an hour so we better just limit it to this but you've got to find a way mm -hmm. to get the fullness of the word to the body of Christ amen. that's what it's all about amen and I, you said something about milking the word and getting into the word I wanted to read this scripture before we go and it says one thing that we have to do first is in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse mm -hmm. 1 it says wherefore laying aside all malice and all gal and all hypocrisies and envyings and evil speakings as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. Sometimes you just got to lay aside all this stuff you think, all this stuff you feel and say, God, regardless of what I feel, all this malice, all these other things, I want to grow and I desire the sincere milk of the word. I want to milk it as apostles say. But, you know, it takes an action on your part. Lay aside all that other stuff and say, you know what, God, I want to grow. I want this milk so my spirit can grow, so I can grow and be an example in the kingdom. Amen. And one of the greatest disappointments I've experienced uh, in uh, dealing with Bible Faith Global University and trying to get it to the body of Christ, one of the greatest disappointments I have experienced comes from senior leaders. Sure. They, uh, some of them refuse mm -hmm. to become a part of our level of, of, of training and teaching mm -hmm. 
because they really feel like they already know, yet they've had no uh, kind of accountability mm -hmm. for what they know. Others have told me, they said, well, you know, you can bring it to my church, mm -hmm. and I can, and my members, I, I, can, I can allow you to teach my members, but, but I'm not going to study with my members. Mm -hmm. They say, you know, because, you know, I don't want my members to see me uh, learning and growing and maturing in their midst because it'll cause them to get in rebellion or mm -hmm. disrespect me. And then others will tell me, well, you know, uh, my denomination just don't believe it this way. So rather than have you come in mm -hmm. and teach something against my denomination, which will cause me to, to actually be pushed out of my denomination, I'd rather just uh, just bid you Godspeed. You do what, do what you think God's got. These things, darlings, uh, this is very disappointing because, uh, you know, if you're going to be a great leader, mm -hmm. then you're going to have to be a great learner. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have the time to, to dig deep into certain things yourself, why, why can't you? you allow those who have done it those who have dug deep to share with you what needs to be understood and the pastors who have benefited the most mm -hmm. from what we have taught have been the ones who ride along with their membership they That's brought good. the program in and they sat and they were taught uh, and they received right along with their congregation mm -hmm. you know it's sad but but true that pride mm -hmm. is stronger at the top mm -hmm. That it is at the bottom. If you got a bunch of proud people uh, serving the Lord, then look up at the leader, because that leader is probably the one who's actually showing that pridefulness. Uh, again, there's too much to go through. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to stop. Uh, but listen, darling, just just remember, uh, if you don't believe what we're sharing with you, if you don't understand the fullness of it, go back. Pull out the scriptures we're dealing with. Study them for yourself. But more than anything, mm -hmm. be like the Bereans. Search it out for yourself. And you will find the truth of God. But do not allow anyone to tell you what is in the Bible if they haven't been in the Bible themselves. And the proof is in the pudding. Mm -hmm. When you've been in the Bible, then just like what's going on with us, the word of God exudes out of you and the, you rightly divide the truth. You don't divide it uh, your way and, and what you feel is right, but you let the word speak for itself. Till next time, remember this, greater is he that's yes. in you Oh, you got a scripture there? No. Okay. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And with God, all things are possible to them that believe. God Amen. bless you. God bless you. We love you. Looking forward to being with you again next week. To then just continue in the greatness of God and all that God has to offer uh, to you through his word. Amen.